This is just heartbreaking and it's happened too many times. So we're going to make sure that we continue to fight. I want to thank the independent media and our commercial media for giving attention and shining a light on what happened. We saw what happened and we saw that it was wrong, that it was unjustified, that it was uncalled for. And it is the continued aggression of the St. Paul Police Department that continues to have people of color killed needlessly. They shoot first and ask questions later. That's all they know how to do is kill people. Listen! That's right. That's right. So right now I'm going to turn it over to Michelle Gross, the founder of, um, oh my God, I'm forgetting everything. I'm so sorry. Communities United against police brutality. Um, let's give Michelle a hand. Y'all, thank you so much for being here, and I'm so proud to stand with you today. I'm so distressed about what happened in this building. It's There's no excuse or reason for what happened. It's outrageous because, you know, police, is, as Monique says, shoot first and, and ask questions later. And one of the things that they try to do is they try to control the narrative. And they do that by withholding all of the information to themselves so they can kind of spin a story. And then they know that the news cycle is short. So they will tell their story, and then they know that nobody will find out what really happened because by the time that comes out, it's months and months ahead. So we actually did not want to let that happen. So we sued the St. Paul police to force them to release the name of the gentleman, uh, Vieux Zhang, and we also forced them to release the names of the cops. And then we sued them to force them to release the body camera footage because we are entitled to all of that data under the Data Practices Act, but they violate the law in every one of these police killings because they want to set up a narrative to justify what they've done. And I've looked at that body camera footage. I and want to see the body camera footage. Well, it's on the news and that's the lucky part. So people can see it because what they always try to do is keep this stuff secret. They have kept secret body camera footage for killings that happened a year or more ago. We still have not seen that footage. So this was really rapid for them to release this. And what it showed me is that what we know is this. If there's an edge weapon involved, a knife, the defense against an edge weapon is distance and barriers. The door was a barrier. Yes. They eliminated that, that, that defense. The distance was a barrier. They ran up on him, a man who had uh, great loss of hearing and didn't speak their language. They ran up on him, closed the distance, and removed the barrier. They set themselves up to be in peril and then benefited from that by shooting him and killing him. This was unjustified, in my opinion. I do not believe this thing was justified, and I'm saying that as somebody who has looked at hundreds of, of videos of this kind of stuff. I, I'm totally appalled by it. I think it never needed to happen. It's disgusting that it did. And they thought they were just going to keep everything, you know, not tell his name, ta not tell the names of the cops involved. They were going to keep everything under wraps. And we were just going to go along with it and be par be okay with it. And we're not okay with it. Are we? No, no we're not. No. We are not okay with no. this. And we are demanding justice. And that what does that justice look like to y'all? Fire the cops and prosecute the cops, right? We cannot bring this man back. 
but we must ensure that those cops that engage in this dangerous conduct of putting themselves in peril and then using that as the justification for murdering this man, that they do not get to go free. We cannot let that happen. You know, having one or two or four cops even in this state get prosecuted for murdering people, nowhere near enough. We have to have the cops that engage in this conduct get prosecuted, have a consequence for their conduct, and until they do, we will continue to see more of these kinds of incidents. So it's very important that we press for the prosecution of these officers. These guys are just on a paid vacation right now. Is that acceptable? No. It's not. These guys should be sitting in a jail cell. Yeah. They don't need to be on a paid vacation, paid by the taxpayers. They need to be in a jail cell waiting to be prosecuted for what they did. You know, one of the things I want you to think about, one of the cops, he had a taser. So, you know, we know tasers can be deadly, but he had a taser, but they're not generally considered deadly weapons. Guns are. If one cop thought a taser was okay, why did the other cop think a gun was necessary? Think about that for a second, too. So a lot of this case stinks. A lot of this case looks very unjustified from anybody that looks at this objectively it looks very unju unjustified um it's a good thing that that body camera footage came out it wouldn't have but for a lawsuit and i'm so glad we did that lawsuit to force them to release what is public data to us so they could only spin their narrative for a short period of time and now we know the real truth and i think that's damned important do you all agree yes. yeah so that's why we're out here you know because Anytime a community member loses their lives to the police, it's utterly tragic. But in a situation like this with a 65-year-old man who couldn't hear and didn't speak the language, and they go in and create a sense of peril, create the danger, and then use that danger that they created to justify, that's so wrong. And that's what happened in this case, and that's why we're demanding justice, and that's why we're demanding Arrest these two damn cops. That video is probable cause to arrest them right now. Yep. It was probable cause to arrest them last Saturday. And it's definitely probable cause to arrest them right now. Put their asses in the jail and keep them there until they have a trial. Yeah. Yeah. Justice for you, you yeah. Sean. Justice for you, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. must show up in large numbers to yeah. let them know that we're not playing, that we're not going to stand for this, that we're not going to be quiet, and we don't care what they look like. We don't yeah. care about any of that. We care about human life, and if you take one of them, we're all going to show up. Yeah. So I give my condolences to the family and the Hmong community. I stand with you. Our whole movement stand with you. We got your back. And for Yi Zhong to be treated the way he was treated is, is absolutely abominable. And they need to be prosecuted. Look no further than the people around you. I went to high school with somebody that became a St. Paul police officer. And with the, with the work Shell Gross does and with the work that Monique does, Less than a month looking up officers who had shot and killed people, I found his name, an old high school classmate of mine, who had shot and killed a dog with Matt Severance on a no-knock warrant. All of these police officers have dirt on their hands. And everybody in this community deserves to have police officers or deserves to have some, to, deserves to be treated like a human being. We shouldn't be out here. This shouldn't continue to happen. When Dalal Eid was murdered by the police, we showed up even before we knew his name, ethnicity, or what had happened. This city is on notice. Whether it's Hmong, Vietnamese, black, white, Latino, it doesn't matter. We show up because we are holding these people accountable and you deserve to have law enforcement that is held accountable at the bare minimum. That is a bare minimum. If anybody killed somebody on the job, they wouldn't have that job anymore. How many killer cops are on the payroll in St. Paul? How many killer cops are on the payroll in Minneapolis? The standard is so egregiously low that these people are showing up and treating people like Yi Zhong as expendable. Yi Zhong was a human. Yi Zhong was valuable. He was loved. And maybe in trouble or maybe in treatment, he should be alive. Yes. Yes. Say his name. Yes. Say his name. Yes. Say his name! This is Xi Xiong. 
Mrs. Yia Xiong, who is now the widow. This is Ye this is Ye Xiong younger sister who coming from uh, Michigan. This is the Ye Xiong's older uh, sister who coming from Milwaukee. Yeah, Lan Yalipekuchisaka Elegimo Pao Eto